quick answer question, Mayor Gene, you or the city attorney. Uh, since Councilmember Bradford has given us this indication and, and we've talked about the ability for a director to make these recommendations, could you speak to, or the city attorneys to speak to, why are those provisions typically added into a contract of this sort, and, and what sort of contingencies are they attempting to address, if at all? In, in, in this instance, um, because we're trying to, we're basing our numbers and our needs on what we currently have. So if, if another department director says, well, you have me on this particular plan, but I want all of my folks on this plan, it's just a contingency for something that we don't expect in the future. It might be that we have more more devices than we need. So it's just protecting ourselves. It's just a, it's an operational contingency. Correct. Just, that is correct. Why would we allow for a quarter of the contract's face value? Why, why, why such a large amount? That's just the amount. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's the number they force you to use. That's sort of the typical. Correct. Number. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Irish claims so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's, it's what we've been doing for years. Thank, thank, thank you. Okay. Councilmember Boykins uh, and uh, you have a question. To Director Thompson. Sorry. Director Thompson, good morning. Good morning. Can you explain uh, the, uh, the why, I guess, of the recommendation of uh, one vendor over the other? Uh, and my understanding it was apples and apples. Uh, it was an apple and apple comparison. Uh, for those who may have any questions or concerns about the numbers. Councilmember, good morning, everyone. Uh, we went through a competitive process. Um, uh, the short list is based on technical merits. Uh, the two finalists were asked to uh, ensue in a session called a best and final. And what we did for each category of service, we asked for a price. Uh, in the RFP, there was quantity for that particular service category. And in the BAFO, we asked continually, as it's stated, to go from give us your best price for this area of service. And then there was a, a basically a punch sheet. So um, when we did the calculation, uh, the numbers yielded uh, that the successful proposer was at 21.6.6. And uh, I've had this opportunity to speak to all of you, and I appreciate the time you've taken to walk you through uh, some documentation that we received based on a request, and to walk you through the side-by-side, apples-to-apples comparison uh, for the two finals. And you were satisfied with a fair assessment of both vendors and that the information you presented to the administration to the council was accurate. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Johnson, you actually also responded in writing, I believe, to one of the losing vendors who had questions about the... Uh... I would say the unsuccessful proposal sent me an email on, uh, on uh, uh, February 11th. We, in turn, uh, huddled very quickly and on Saturday morning, responded back with the information that was requested by the unsuccessful proposal. Um, and I have not heard back from them since then. However, uh, what we provided to them was a response line by line to their questions and their tabulation sheet for their specific numbers and how we got to the number of 32.1. Thank you. Councilmember Kubak. Will this contract prevent us from uh, seeking competitive bids for future telecom services? Uh, this is specific to uh, uh, what I would call mobile mobile wireless services. Um, the non-successful proposal is a strong partner of the city and will continue to be so. They provide us services that are crucial to the city of Houston's operations, and I look forward to continuing to partner with them on those services they provide us today. Well, sometimes it makes sense to have more than one provider just for uh, redundancy's sake, and competitive bidding should uh, ensure better rates. I don't disagree with that, sir. Um, we were somewhat surprised because when we let the RFP, there were five categories. But when we did the, the best and final process, it was quite clear that the successful proposer uh, brought us the best price times quantity and is in the best interest of the city in moving in that direction. Well, you were in the TTI meeting, and you remember the questions that, that uh, Councilor Bradford asked uh, some of the speakers that were here and the confusion that, that they, they said the numbers. Uh, they, they, they couldn't verify or justify the numbers. That, and it just began to bring confusion to it all. I, I'm not sure if I understand the, the point of confusion, Council Member. The challenge is around um, if I need a 10-ounce bottle of water versus a 16-ounce bottle of water, that is a decision right of the city. Uh, and respectfully, um, we provided aggregate quantities 
for the service categories that we wanted. And then the city made a decision about how to disperse those based on the various plans inside that service category. Um, and that yielded the best price based on the best and final process, about uh, 26.6 million to move forward with a successful proposal. Councilmember 